Groucho Marx. Can you bet your life? Presented by DeSoto. Is the one, the only. Well, here I am again, winding up the ninth year of You Bet Your Life. Nine years. Starting next week, we begin our summer series, The Best of Groucho. These are some of our best shows from the past. George, who's on the first summer show next week? Do you remember? Yes, uh, Billy Pearson, the jockey, is going to be on the oh, first show. Oh, yes, that's right. I had a lot of fun with him when he was on our show. Since then, he won $64,000 on uh, some show. I can't, can't think of the name of it. But, uh, <laughs> Of course, we're going to have a lot of other wonderful people on the show, too, that we had on before. Well, I hope so. And remember, it starts next week, and tell all your friends, and tell Jack Webb, too. I will. <laughs> all right, let's get on with tonight's show. We've got $1,500. $1, the duck comes down if anybody says it, and you get $100. Groucho, Ann Rowell, and Henry Jacobs are standing by to talk to you. Yeah. Uh-huh. Folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word, and you each get an extra 50 bucks. It's a common word, something you see yeah. here. How'd you do? How'd you do? Yeah. Henry Jacobs, Jacobs, is it? Uh, Jacoby. Yeah, Jacobs. Henry Jacoby and Ann Rowell, huh? Ann, I'll start with you, because you're a woman. Where are you from, Annie? I was born in Bainbridge, Georgia. Hey, born in Georgia? Yes. Are you married? Yes, I have two children. You have, huh? How long have you been married? Sixteen years. Sixteen years. How'd you meet your husband? Well, we met in South Florida at a motorcycle beach party. I hitched a ride with another fellow and ditched him when I got there. You ditched the guy you went with? Why? Well, you see, uh, it I didn't care on the motorcycle? for him, and I thought that if I uh, stuck with him, I, it would uh, cramp my style, you know. You were on the back of the motorcycle? Oh, yes. Well, you were pretty safe back there, weren't you? Huh? Yes. There's not much can happen to a girl on the back of a motorcycle. <laughs> Let's see, you're, uh, you're Henry Jacobs, huh? That's right, Groucho. You have an interesting stash there, a mustache. Uh, Henry. Oh, well, thank you very much. I've been studying it ever since you came up here, yes. and I have one question to ask you. Yes. Why, why do you wear it? <laughs> well, you see, some people have told me that I look better with it, so I've worn it for that reason. I see. Well, I've been told I look better with my head in a bucket, but you don't see me wearing it. Absolutely, <laughs> well, I've been watching your show a long time, Groucho, and I kind of wondered about your mustache, why you wear it. It's sort of a Well, I have no other place to put it. Huh? <laughs> That's kind of the way I feel, too, you know. Are you married, Henry? Oh, uh, no, I'm not, no. You're not married with a mustache like that? You're not married? No, no. Maybe you, uh, why aren't you married? Don't the girls like your mustache? How do you well, pronounce it, mustache or mustache? Mustache. Mustache. Yeah. Mustache, huh? <laughs> Are you, are you from England? No, no. Are you from Dixie? No, no. Are you from Hunger? <laughs> Some people have told me I am, but... Well, I think you're a very fine-looking fellow, Bill. Uh, Henry... I might say the same thing about you, George. Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't mind being called George. I got mixed up the director. There have been a number of kings of England, you know, who were named George. That's true. The fat one who in the Revolutionary War. What a jerk he was. He <laughs> lost the whole continent because Did you know he... him? Well, I... <laughs> I was born about five years after he was, oh. uh, he died. Do you have a job, uh, Oh, yes. Henry? Yes, yes, I do. I, uh, I have a small film company in San Francisco. We make, uh, films for the television stations. Oh, really? Commercials, You're professional, yeah. then? Well, no, then I have a, I have a radio program up in Berkeley, uh, uh radio station. We... You, you move around jockey. quite a bit, huh? Well, Berkeley's right next to San Francisco, oh. and uh, we have a bridge up there that you can go right across. It's very good. It costs good. a quarter, but I mean... It's, yeah. uh, I have a bridge. It costs $300. <laughs> <laughs> Henry, uh, well, you're, you're a very unusual pair, and I'd like to go on talking to you, but the time has come to play You Bet Your Life. Here we go for the dictionary quiz. You can start with 10 all the way to 100, and one answer between you, your partner. What do you want to stop? A hundred. A hundred, all right. What is a, a hedonist? H-E-D-O-N-I-S-T. Pleasure. Pleasure. Okay. It's someone who uh, devotes their life primarily to the pursuit of pleasure. You don't have to go any further. You hit it right on the nail with a thumb with a hammer. Huh? 
You're off to a great start. You have $200 now. And now what? 90. 90. All right. Synonyms are words of the same meaning. What do you call words of opposite meanings? Anonyms. And, and uh, did you know that? Amy? I'd heard it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you now have $290. And now what? 80. 80. $80. What is the visage of a person? What is the, the visage of a person? V-I-S-A-G-E. It's the face. It, sh it sure is. It sure is. You now have $370. Now what? 70. 70, huh? For $70, what is a cistern? Mm -hmm. It's a well. Right. And you wind up with $440. Well, you can't do better than that on this show. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mrs. Alice Enlow and Mr. Albert Eisen are waiting to talk to you. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word, and you each get an extra 50 bucks. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Let's see. Alice Enlow and Albert Eisen, eh? Where are you from, Alice? I am from uh, a little town in western Colorado, Grand Junction, Colorado. Oh, Grand Junction. A little Junction. town on the western slope. Do you miss your old hometown, or did you come out here to forget? Well, uh, I can't very well forget it. I have some claims back there that keep reminding me of oh, it. Oh, and that's why you came to California? Mm. With all these claims against you, you <coughs> must have barely beat the sheriff to the border. Didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, they happen to be uranium claims. Really? Wow. Well. <laughs> Alice, I happen to have some oil stock that's absolutely <laughs> worthless. <laughs> but uh, I, together, I think we could work out a nice fast swindle. Uh, would you be interested in a partnership? Uh, I'll tell you, Groucho, I'm a special investigator for the State Corporation Commission. I spend eight hours a day, five days a week, investigating those bad oil deals. <laughs> well, uh, do you know what the fare is to Toronto? <laughs> you find much of this fraudulent activity in Los Angeles? Yes, there's... That's the statement of the month. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Probably one of the main reasons is that Southern California is a mecca for middle-aged people and elderly people who retire from the Middle West. And, and spend their time on the freeway. <laughs> <laughs> and on the fast line, too. <laughs> Alice, I admire the work you're doing. I think it should be encouraged, and I'd like to help you in every way possible. Thank uh, you. Would you happen to have a list of these old people with money? <laughs> You see, I haven't got too much time, and I, I'd like to get started right away if I could. <laughs> now, uh, I'll get back to you, Alice. Uh, who are, are you anybody that I should know? Albert Eisen, Groucho. Eisen, huh? That's well, right. Uh, are you in the stock business? Uh, no. Groucho, uh, I, I was... Where are you from? I was born in Los Angeles, but when I was five and a half years old, we moved to Torrance. Oh, Torrance, isn't, isn't that where it rains all the time? And... Oh, no, Groucho, don't say that. We're tired about those old jokes like that. You were going to tell me that joke that when it rains, it pours in torrents. Actually, what I was going to say was that uh, when it rains in Los Angeles, it comes down in torrents. Same joke. Al, you've got me interested in your town. Where is it, and, and what is it like there? Torrance is 22 square miles, and we have 75,000 people. Are there many umbrella shops in Torrance? <laughs> We've gained 50,000 people in the last five years. We're increasing in population at the rate of 1,000 people a month, I think. And, and it I'm doesn't rain there? And you well, it does rain occasionally. Oh. I, I guess you get that admission. You're willing you to know, concede that. Yes, huh? if I can go ahead. <laughs> We're heavy industrialized. We lot of, have lots of factories, and they pay 65% of our tax bill. You're wasting your time. Nobody's listening to that kind of talk. Yes, they will. We, we're building a new civic center. Now, why are you so excited about this hamlet? Well, Groucho, I'm the mayor. Oh. <laughs> 
Well, Al, I, I, wa I was wrong, and I, I want to apologize. You're no small-time operator. You're the head of the mob, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, Al, you're a good sport, and I'm sure a good mayor. All right, now let's play You Bet Your Life. In the race for the $1,500, the first couple won $440. Now, you selected the spelling quiz. This is an old-fashioned spelling bee. What do you want to start with? Let's include this count the count. Right. Little ones are easy, big ones are hard. You do? Start, start with a hundred. Well, yeah. All right, for a hundred dollars, spell right, the... Live recklessly. Right what is that? Spell the word fluorescent, as in modern fluorescent lighting. One answer between you now. Fluorescent. F-L-O-U-R-E-S-C-E-N-T. No, I'm sorry, Mayor, but it's F-L-U-O-R-E-S-C-E-N-T. Now, $50. Now, do you want to try 90? Okay. Mm -hmm. You can try easy ones if you want. No. All right, spell the word repetitious, meaning continued or tedious repeating. R-E-P-E-T-I-T-I-O-U-S. You're right, man, that's right. I think it doesn't matter. You now have $140. Now what? I'm not going to influence you. I want you to make your own decision. 80 bucks. 80 dollars. Spell conscientious, meaning with strict regard as to duty. C-O-N-S-C-I-E-N-T-I-O-U-S. Go ahead, you do. C-O-N-S-C-I-E-N-T-I-O-U-S. You're right, Mayor. You're right. You now have $220. What are we going to go for now? What was that, 80? That was 80, yes. 70? This may make you a gubernatorial candidate. <laughs> for $70, spell the word limousine, meaning a type of automobile, usually chauffeur-driven. Limousine, L-I-M-O-U-S-I-N-E. L-I-M-O-U-S-I-N-E. That's right. Okay, then you... <laughs> and you wind up with $290. Well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Oh, Put it there, Mayor. <laughs> Doctor, uh, Edna Kitchen Hill and Wade Ruby are waiting to talk to you, so folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Betcha Life. Say the secret word, and you each get an extra 50 smackers. It's a common word, something you see every day. Edna Hill and Wade Ruby, huh? Where are you from, uh, Edna? I was born in the deep south, in the deep country in Louisiana. Where are you from, Mr. Ruby? I was born in Coldwater, Mississippi. Oh, you're both, you're southerners, huh? Both yeah, neighboring yeah. states. Is that so, huh? That's very, are you married, Wade? Yes, Groucho, I've been married almost 25 years. Is that so? That's a long time. You don't look at it. How'd you meet your wife? How'd well, you meet your wife? <laughs> well, there's not uh, anything particularly exciting about the way we met, but we had a very interesting honeymoon. Why, why was that? Were you married to two different people at the time? <laughs> no, Groucho. Uh, don't you think all honeymoons are interesting? <laughs> I have an idea they are, yes. <laughs> Yes, the thing that made our honeymoon uh, night so unusual was the fact that there was a raging torrent between us all night. Who was that? Was that her mother? <laughs> no, uh, we were camping up in the Ozarks at a little place called Natural Dam, Arkansas, and it had been raining up in the hills and there was a flash flood that uh, came down suddenly over the dam. She was on one side of the stream and I was on the other. And it was almost the morning before the stream ran down, where I could wait. A you must, have, you must have been run down by that time. <laughs> <laughs> well, if Congress isn't convinced we need flood control, this, this is certainly good. <laughs> well, I imagine so, Grant. You know what Richard Lovelace said: "Water has sunk more grievances than wine." Or was that Swinburne? I don't believe it's either one, Groucho. I believe it's a man named Merrill Moore. Merrill Moore? No, I thought that was Archie Moore, wasn't it? <laughs> no, I'm sure it was Lovelace. He's my favorite poet, by the way. He was known as the melancholy poet of the 18th century. Now, is there anything else you'd like to know about Lovelace? I call him Dickie Boy. <laughs> well, there's, there's one thing that uh, you have right about Lovelace. That's his name. <laughs> Really? Did I have that right? Yeah. Well, that's he, astonishing. He, uh, he was not an 18th century poet, but a 17th century. And he was not melancholy, but he was a cavalier, kind of a gay blade. Stone walls do not a prison make, no iron bars a cage. Yes, I know that. Uh, minds innocent and quiet take that for a hermitage. 
That's very pretty. Now, were you reciting this when the water was going between you? <laughs> uh, no, I think I was thinking of Shakespeare's Tempest about that oh, time. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> well, how do you know so much about Lovelace, sir? What is your racket? You haven't told us yet. I'm chairman of the Department of English at George Pepperdine College. Oh, whoops, Lots sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you realize you're wrecking my only claim to culture here, don't you? <laughs> I've been misquoting Lovelace on this show for years. Well, I'm undone at last. The coward dies a thousand deaths. The brave man dies but once. Bridie Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> And as Byron said, nothing ever happens to the brave. You remember that? You sure that's Byron? Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I wouldn't bet. <laughs> I wouldn't bet on anything tonight. Huh? <laughs> Mrs. Hill, may I ask your age? You may, but whether I'd answer is another thing. <laughs> I don't care. You don't care to answer? Well, well don't tell me. I don't oh, care. Oh, I don't mind. I don't 62. care. 62. You're 82. 62. 62. <laughs> well, I thought you were around 48. Well... You uh, know, a uh, um, woman is as old as she looks, and a man is old when he doesn't look. <laughs> now, was that Lovelace? Uh, no, I don't know the author. No, I think it was Bugs Bear. <laughs> now, Edna, is that your name or Eden? Uh, Edna. Edna. Huh? E-D-N-A. Oh, do you have any hobbies to while away the hours? Oh, yes, I have plenty of hobbies. I'm a trained artist. A trained paint, artist? Yes. I studied art. Mm -hmm. I taught art at one time in the college. What else do you like to do besides? Oh, uh, I raised a uh, bonsai. A bonsai is a dwarf tree. Oh, I thought that was a bullseye. Huh? No. Now, what no, is a bonsai? You're wrong. A bonsai. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, how big are these runs? Well, I have a I have an elm that's about this tall, and if it had been allowed to grow, it would be about 50 years, uh, uh, 50 feet tall. You know, I have the same hobby, only I didn't know I, I was interested in bonsais. Oh, you did. As a matter of fact, I have a tree that's over 50 years old, and it's oh? no bigger than a foot. Now, what do you think what of that? What kind of a tree is it's that? It's a shoe tree. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that's true, and if I hadn't trimmed it so much, by now it would be a clothes tree. <laughs> I'm sorry, Edna, I didn't mean to be so hysterically funny, huh? Well, you weren't. <laughs> uh, this is the last stages. <laughs> the contestants are striking back. <laughs> Professor, what would Lovelace have to say about this? How are the mighty fallen? <laughs> but, but that's not Lovelace. Uh, that's... Uh, the poet David, who was king in the land of Canaan, or as you say, Canaan. Yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> 17th century B.C. poet. I'm really getting it good tonight. Uh, <laughs> well, I happen to know another famous quotation that fits. It's from Shakespeare, who said, how sharper than a serpent's tooth it is to have an educated contestant. <laughs> <laughs> Lovelace. Mr. Ruby, let's find out about your work. Just what do you do in your job, besides embarrassing uh, quiz masters? <laughs> I, teach, uh, I teach Chaucer, Shakespeare. You teach Chaucer, Shakespeare? Why doesn't Chaucer <laughs> teach it himself? Huh? <laughs> and I teach the romantic poets and uh, editorial writing, feature writing. Mm -hmm. And you'd be particularly interested. Uh, next fall, I'm beginning for the first time a new course in humorous literature. Is that so? There's a crack in there someplace. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever pick up any hot jokes from your students, or are they too busy ducking class? Well, I have a rather interesting hobby of gathering uh, interesting answers to examination questions. Mm -hmm. Could you give us one of these pearls? Well, there was a history student who was asked to name three results of the Battle of Gettysburg, and he wrote, uh, some were killed, some were wounded, and some weren't hurt at all. <laughs> well, you know what the original joke was? No, I haven't heard it. The question was, how many bones do you have in your body? And the kid answered, 900. So his teacher says, uh, that's certainly more than I have. And the kid says, yeah, I know. But I had sardines for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
I may not know Lovelace, but I know Joe Miller. <laughs> Wait, do you have a favorite among the daffy answers your students have given you? Yes, since I teach English, I often think of the one that a freshman girl wrote early in the fall when she was taking an orientation battery of tests. She was asked, why did you come to college? And she said, I come here to be went with, but I ain't yet. <laughs> you know what the original of that joke is? <laughs> I, I don't believe I know that either. The teacher says, I have went. That's wrong, isn't it? And the kid in the front row says, yes, ma'am, it's wrong because you ain't went yet. <laughs> Chocolate. <laughs> well, you're a nice couple, and I'd like to continue talking to you two, but I'm, I'm getting too educated. Uh, <laughs> so the time has come to play You Bet Your Life. In the race for the $1,500, the first couple is leading with $440. Oh, what a nerve you have picking spelling. <laughs> This is an old-fashioned spelling bee. You get only one chance at the correct spelling and only one answer between you. I want you to spell the word and then pronounce it. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, uh, one answer between you. Now, uh, what do you want to start with? 100. 100. Spell the word vicissitude, meaning a change or succession as a change of fortune. Vicissitude. V-I-C. C-I-S-S-I-T-U-D-E. Now, I'm sorry, it's only one C. All right, yes, all right. I well, you, uh, well, you now have half your original hundred, you have $50. Thank you. What do you want to go for, Rock? 90? 90. Okay. Spell the word pharmaceutical, meaning a medicinal preparation. Pharmaceutical. P-H-A-R-M-A-C-E-U-T-I-C-A-L. That's right. That's right. Well, you now have $140. How did you get all the C's in the right place that time? <laughs> no trouble that time. Oh. $80? Yes, 80 the Little ones, you know, are easy. Let's try 80 All right. <laughs> uh, spell the word acquiesce, meaning to consent, agree. Acquiesce. A-C. Talk it over, please. A-C-Q-U-I-E-S-C-E. -E. Absolutely right, Professor. <laughs> You now have $220. Uh, I, I presume you want the $70 one. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's your last chance to beat the other couples and talk it over. Spell the word therapeutic, meaning to treat medically. Therapeutic. Talk it over. T-H-E-R-A-P-E-U-T-I-C. That's absolutely right, Professor. That's absolutely right. <laughs> And you wind up with two hundred and ninety dollars. Sorry, you lost the first one. Thanks and good luck from the Thank Desoto Plymouth. <laughs> that means Mrs. Rowell and Mr. Jacobs with four hundred forty dollars in just one minute get the chance of the one thousand five hundred dollar question. Mr. Jacobs, right back in here, please. Oh, there's old Stashy again. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go for $1,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully, and please no help from the audience. Here it is. Franklin D. Roosevelt saved the longest presidential term in our history. But for $1,500, can you tell me who saved the shortest period of time? What is it? Andrew Johnson. No, I'm sorry. It's William Henry Harrison, who saved one month. That's a shame. Well, you lost the big money. How much did they win the quiz, George? Well, they went all the way in the quiz, $440. Well, that isn't too bad. Thanks for being with us, and thanks to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Sorry you lost. <laughs> And here's just a final reminder that the best of Groucho starts next week. And our first guest will be jockey Billy Pearson and John J. Anthony. So if you'd like to see these people again, I suggest you tune in the best of Groucho next week.
Friends, go in and see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. This is George Fenneman signing off with a reminder from the National Safety Council. At night, drive at the speed which will permit you to stop within your headlight range.